Welcome to today's lecture. So today we are going to talk about the financial crisis in 2008 and the Asian financial crisis in 1997. So first of all, we are going to talk about the cause and then the consequence of both crises. So first of all, can anyone tell me uh, about the financial crisis in 1997? Me, me, me. Okay, maybe Austin can talk about the causes and Cyrus can talk about the consequences. Okay. okay, so first, let me talk about the Asian financial crisis in 1997. During 1996 and 1997, the economic conditions were favorable for investors. However, after some external shocks, such as deflation of Chinese renminbi and Japanese yen, it affected the export and slowed down the Asian economic activities. It led to a speculator attack, and investors started to panic and some country had to follow its currency. Therefore, the crisis broke out. Causes of Asian financial crisis in 1997 include chronic capitalism, lack of risk management, bust in Asian economy, and policies of other countries. First of all, chronic capitalism means that economy is dependent on people with close relationship to the government. Friends or family members of the government owned major financial institutions. They believe that political friends will bail them out when things go wrong, and banks also believe them in this way. Therefore, they are easier to borrow money and invest in a risky way. Their risk tolerance will increase. Since their investments were risky, it made the financial fragile. Moreover, people were lack of risk management. Investors only focus on the favorable investment conditions without paying enough regard to the downside, which is the debt level was rising. Also, they believe that even when crisis broke out, international monetary fund will bail them out and stop the crisis. Fund managers invest in her behavior which is following their peers. Therefore, investors had low incentive to manage risk. Another cause is bust in Asia economy. In the early 1990s, the growth was strong in export and GDP with appropriate interest rate. However, the current account deficits were increasing and debt level was rising. It led to sh shutdown of some major financial institutions in Thai, and Thai government had to float the path. Speculators attacked the Asia economy and caused the crisis. In addition, Policies of other countries were the causes also. US government increased interest rate which attracted investors. Hot money in Asia dried up, but Asia economy was financed by hot money. So it led to fall in currency and triggered out other problems stated above, which caused the crisis broke out. So here come my turn. I'm Cyrus and I'm going to talk about the impact of the Asian financial crisis and I separate it into Inside Asia and Outside Asia. So first of all, for Inside Asia, there were lots of consequences and I'm going to pick two, the social impact and the economic impact. So to begin with, unemployment was one of the most significant consequences during the crisis as the loss of company declared bankruptcy and closed down, which means people lost their jobs. So people without an income could consume less, enjoy less, or even couldn't afford the daily life. So, they, the consumption of the economy would fall. And moreover, as stock market and investors were victims in the crisis, we can see those significant drops in stock market in Hong Kong and Thailand. So, investors were traumatized and, and not willing to invest anymore, and also, their, the, the money they had would fall. And for the property rate, as the financial crisis critically damaged the economy by unemployment and drop in stock, mar stock price, which means people would have less money in their hand. So some of them may fall below the property line, and so hence the property rate would increase in, in some Asian countries. And so other social impacts are like as peep as government had insufficient amount of money, they needed to cut their expenditure on subsidies like on educations. So hence, 
some people were forced out of the school because they don't have enough money. They didn't have enough money to afford the school fee. So the literacy rate would fall. And as consumption, investment, and government expenditure fall, there would be a drop in GDP definitely. So, which would critically damage the Asian country's economy. And as Asian countries didn't have sufficient money to recover as they are developing, they needed to ask for help from foreign countries. So, that would increase the reliance on foreign countries. And for outside Asia, as international investors have learned a lesson after the crisis, they would not lend that much money to developing countries anymore because they were scared. And hence, it led to an economic slowdown in some developing countries all over the world. And moreover, as after the crisis, the oil price was shocked and sharply decreased, it created a crisis in Russia during 1998, as Russia is an economy relied heavily on oil export. Excellent! Yeah! So who can tell me about the crisis in 2008? Bye bye! Hey! My John! Yo! Henry, tell me about the financial crisis in 2008. <sighs> I don't know! I only know the consequences. Okay, then I'll help you about the cause of the financial crisis. Nice, Professor. To focus on the causes of financial crisis in 2008, first, we need to know the background of the whole financial system. Starting from 1980, the US interest rate started to drop from 16% to 6% in 1990, and finally almost 0% during the financial crisis in 2008. The liquidity is getting higher and higher and the expected return is lower. This provided opportunities for different kinds of investments to exist. Since 1992, real estate has become a legitimate asset class due to the higher return rates and low interest rate. After the Asian financial crisis in 1997, there was a large amount of capital inflow to the US, which led to the US housing bubbles and market overheat. And in the 1999, there was the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act. This changed the whole financial system by allowing investment banks to provide a larger variety of services and provided incentives for excessive risk-taking. Now, let's take a closer look at the causes of the financial crisis in 2008. As mentioned before, housing was considered a low-risk and high-return investment. As interest rate is low, people will invest more on housings. As demand increased, price will also increase. According to the graph on overpriced new home in the US, the percentage difference between median new house prices and the 1990s trend had risen to the peak of 25.7% in 2005, which was extremely high, caused the housing bubble. Another cause of the financial crisis was the emergence of supply mortgage and mortgage-backed securities. To cover up the risk, most of them were unregulated and had a low transparency. The financial sector's debt reached to the peak of 116% of GDP in 2007, causing another bubble in the financial market. The last major cause of the financial crisis was the false ratings on the securities and bonds. The ratings are set by the ratings agencies. However, these rating agencies were pro profited by excess grade, but not the performance. And also, they are paid by the issuers or the investment banks, but not the purchaser. Therefore, they tended to rate assets higher in order to earn more. And the issuers can even redesign their rating guidelines to attract investors. Therefore, the ratings on securities and bonds were misleading and more investors invested in these assets of an underestimated risk. What are the effects of 2008 financial crisis? First of all, since most companies in UK went bankrupt, so many workers were sacked, 
coupled with slower economic growth, the demand for labor decreased dramatically. Unemployment rate rose to an extremely high level. Now, in U.S., 5.5 million of jobs were lost due to the crisis. As you can see from Figure Six, the unemployment rate for most major economies, such as France, Germany, Japan, and U.S., rose to high levels. With France and U.S. having the highest unemployment rate of 9%. Now, secondly. The stock market were also hit badly by the crisis. Since many companies were bankrupted, many shareholders immediately sold all their stocks in the stock market to prevent any further loss of wealth. As a result, the supply of these shares suddenly increased significantly, resulting in big drop in stock prices. Shanghai had the biggest drop with over 65% decrease in stock index. Here are some of the statistics and information of how the world stock market performed after the crisis broke out. The U.S. lost 7.4 trillion of dollar. Now this is roughly 66,200 USD on average per U.S. household. The Dow, for the very first time after 2004, closed below 10,000. The Hang Seng Index. 48% lower than previous year's closing. Shanghai even worse, 65% lower than previous year. Britain's stock index has worse due to than by 31.3%, which is also a record. Now, apart from that, GDP, GDP also decreased dramatically, a lower consumption due to decreasing income. Investment prospect and confidence dropped, leading to drop in investment as well as decrease in government expenditure. All these factors contributed to the drop in GDP. Germany had a positive growth rate of GDP at around seven percent in the first quarter of 2008, as you can see from Figure Three. But then, next in next year, it decreased by 60 percent. Which was the hugest drop amongst different major economies, as you can see from the graph. The crisis in 2008 was truly a financial tsunami to the world economy. Well done! Yeah! yeah. Okay, now let's invite our guest speaker, Dr. Amber, to talk about the similarities of the two crises. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm Emma, and here's count the similarities in Asian financial crisis in 1997 and the financial crisis in 2008. For the causes, there are some common points between two crises. First of all, there is regulatory failure. Banks excessively issue mortgages, which is subprime mortgage. Also, there is chronic capitalization. Which means friends and family members own major financial institution, while political friends will bail will bail them out when things go wrong. This leads to the increasing risk tolerance. On the other side, the risk management is insufficient due to the hurt behavior by peers following. For the consequences, there is a drop in GDP, which damage economy eventually. The investment, consumption, and government expenditure decrease. There is a drop in unemployment rate, which decrease the living standard and poverty. There is hit in the stock market. Also, there is recession is resulted eventually. Although disastrous effects are brought to the economy by the crisis, we can still learn from the crisis. Crisis can be prevented and well managed in the future. For instance, the losses can be minimized and the recovery of the economy can be split up. Also, the crisis can be prevented by minimizing the susceptibility of a country to crisis. Oh, thank you, Dr. Amber. So now I will conclude what we have just said in the lecture. In this lecture, we've learned that how a financial crisis may occur. Actually, both Asian financial crisis in 1997 and the financial crisis in 2008 shared some of the similar causes. Nations have learned from the similar mistakes they had taken and should not repeat on those failures. This is the end of the lecture.